officially the console wars is over. So we have the finest lineup of games that we have ever brought to E3. If every individual grain of sand on planet Earth represented one billion stars on planets, you would have only accounted for one percent of the universe. Xbox is here to stay. We're in this business to make a difference. And we are in it to lead.
Beth Llewellyn from Nintendo of America, Director of Public Relations. Uh, Nintendo's here at the E3 show to debut a uh, lineup of awesome games for the Nintendo GameCube coming out this year. Big titles coming from Nintendo this year include Super Mario Sunshine. It's Mario's return to the action-adventure genre, uh, where you're going to have Mario. He's got his new water pack. He's gone on a vacation, but somebody's messed with his vacation, and it's Mario to the rescue. Then we have Star Fox Adventures, which is coming this September. Uh, it's Star Fox, the whole Star Fox team, and uh, quite an adventure game. It's almost an epic. Uh, then we have Metroid Prime. Metroid is a game series that we haven't seen in a number of years, so we've got a lot of game fans very excited to play this. And early in 2003, you'll see The Legend of Zelda. Uh, this epic adventure has been completely reborn, a new look for Link, and it's quite magical, and we think it will enchant gamers of all ages. Nintendo's focused on making games for all ages. We certainly have our core demographic, and we will never abandon some of those younger gamers. But we're also making games for the older audience. We recognize that the video game industry is broadening, and there are um, you know, different tastes, different gamers. And we have some exciting content this year uh, from Capcom, Resident Evil, uh, which uh, has just launched for Nintendo GameCube. There's a new version coming out later this year called Resident Evil Zero. And we also have Eternal Darkness, which is a brand new psychological thriller uh, that is going to really uh, intrigue a lot of gamers out there. But it's definitely for the older audience. We will have something for everyone. Our library should ex well exceed 150 games, and that covers all the major genres, from sports games to action games, adventure, role playing, puzzle. You name it, you're going to find it on Nintendo GameCube. Uh, we're most excited about some of our first party entries, including Metro Prime, Star Fox Adventures, Animal Crossing, Legend of Zelda, and of course, Super Mario Sunshine. I got an idea for a movie, and it goes like this. Check it out, it's about a boy to get the bigger cot in a bottle of Mr. Piff. And we will have adventures like the boy in a bottle did. Is it too soon to whisper Oscar?
Fantastic! 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 Dragon's Lair, a fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. the actions of a daring adventurer finding his way through the castle of a dark wizard who has enchanted it with treacherous monsters and obstacles. continues against the awesome forces that oppose your efforts to reach the dragon's lair. Lead on, adventurer. Your quest awaits. No knowledge of what was to come, nor did I care. And you shall surely perish. Oh. 
Are weak. Godzilla destroy all monsters melee. And uh, what we're doing right here, we have Godzilla and uh, Megalon, and they are uh, going at it in Seattle. Seattle is one of uh, one of eight cities that we have in the game. The uh, the entire city is destructible. So some buildings, some buildings are destructible. Some buildings you actually can pick up. Whoops, I'm picking up you. Let me do that. You can actually pick up some buildings. Carry them around, throw them, at your, throw them at your opponent, and smash them over the head with them. Um, one of the coolest things about Godzilla, though, back off of me a little bit, back up, there you go. Actually, let's get a better, there we go. Is they all do special attacks. So each each monster has his own special attack based on the monster from the movies. So all these, they have over uh, over 10 monsters, and they're all Toho monsters, and not, it's the original Godzilla characters. So it's Godzilla, right now you're playing with Megalon, but Mechagodzilla, 
Lincoln, which we'll, we'll show them in a second. And we also have uh, Rodan, King Ghidorah, everybody's favorite Godzilla monsters. Uh, so each monster is going to have their own skill set. Uh, each monster is going to have their own special fighting. Godzilla uses his tail a lot. Just about to get up here. Knock you around with his tail. Buildings are fog over the place. The game is actually for one to four players. So you can play it as in the adventure mode. We have over five modes. You can play it the adventure mode by yourself. It takes you through the game, unlocks new characters. You can play destruction mode, which uh, uh, destroys as many buildings as you can within a given time period. Um, you can play uh, uh, melee mode, which is between one and four players. And that basically is uh, just a free for all of one, of one to four players.
name is Tom Leonard. I'm with the Nintendo of America. Here I have The Legend of Zelda for the Nintendo GameCube. You see the shimmering effect? Because basically you're inside a mountain in a volcano area. An epic opening sequence here. Really gives you a sense that you're coming up against something very huge. So we gotta figure out what to do and come running over here. Then I'm gonna use my hook shot up, up on top. Oh, let's see if I got it. Oh, I missed it. Ouch. All right. Even the game experts will have trouble with this game. So I'm trying to, there I go. Now you know what that is. Uh oh. Grabbing him by the tail. So I'm gonna swing around a little bit. You can hear the grunting of the dragon. Gonna let go. And this is what happens. Uh oh. All right, great. Looks like we might have gotten the guy. So this isn't so bad. Gonna look back up. Uh oh. That just made him mad. And now I'm gonna have to repeat the process again, try and snag onto that tail. Swing a couple times. All right. Great, got him again. But that's still not gonna do it. There's beautiful effects in this game. All right, one more time. Swing back and forth. See some great effects down below. The boss is actually following my movement as I run around, or swing around. So again, like me, motor game, you really have a sense of accomplishment. You've overcome the gargantuan, but no, that's not it. And so this is how you end the sequence right here. Get close to his eye. Wait for him to come back here. Okay, I think probably one more time should be able to do it. There we go. did it. Link's pleased with himself. And there's a very brief introduction to uh, some of the action sequences in the game.
I'll go and check it out. Chris, take care. Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. <clears throat> what is it? Blood. Richard, what happened? Whole place is a killing zone. There were monsters. You're gonna make it. Jill, don't scare me. You don't know what's going to happen. Take it with you. You? Chris Redfield, Alpha Team. We're here to rescue you. No, that wasn't part of our deal. Uh, Enrico! Have any idea as to what might be at the bottom? <laughs> There's still rooms in that mansion we can't get into because they're locked up. Okay, if there's anything, I'll go back to the other mansion. No! Shit. Jill, thought you were with her. Yeah, I know. We got separated. Did you notice? Barry, he sounded a little flaky. I think age is starting to take its toll. We'll go outside, get some fresh air for a change. All at the 47 yard line. Mason, wide left.
on it. Huh. Room on the left side. Oh. 35. Oh. A game of 17. Oh. It's first and 10. George behind the quarterback. Dyson in motion. They toss this one out left. George lines up behind the quarterback. Nice block. George gets the block again. Boom to the right. Holly makes the hit.
Hi, my name is Phil Harrison. I'm the Senior Vice President of Development for Sony Computer Entertainment. Here at E3, PlayStation 2 is dominating the show with over 200 new games covering every single genre you could imagine and a whole bunch of new ones that haven't really been invented. As you always know, PlayStation 2 has led the way in sports in every possible category. Um, and we're really pleased with our advances in soccer and American football, basketball, every particular category is available. But what's interesting for the first time this year is online. And we're seeing these sports games go online and deliver networked multiplayer experiences for the first time. John Madden Football for the US market, pioneering network multiplayer. And we demoed that the other day with guys in Florida and in California playing head-to-head -head over the internet. Very, very compelling. Also showing at E3 for the first time is a game called Primal. This was developed in our studios in Cambridge in England and I think has set new heights for a 3D engine on PlayStation 2. Very strong female main character called Jen. Not trying to be like a sexy hero like Lara Croft, but she's a good-looking girl, but she's a strong, very good story-led character. Um, and that game will be out later this year. Highlights of the last year for Sony have obviously been the dominance of PlayStation 2 in the marketplace. Over 30 million machines have now been sold around the world, putting us far and away in the number one leadership position in every market that we've entered into. Combined on PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, we have sold over one, one billion, billion units of software. I mean, this is a tremendous achievement that uh, doesn't have a parallel in our, in our industry, and that's what we're really proud of.
Britney Spears. My world tour is starting soon, so I'm holding auditions around the country to find the best dancers. Since I spend so much time on the road with my dancers, they're like my family. So if you think you've got what it takes, let's see what you can do. Hi, my name is uh, Charles Harraby. I'm a game content manager over at Ubisoft. Uh, this is our game, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It's based on the movie, uh, and we'll get right into it. One of the key concepts that Genki, our developer, came up with was the idea of using two analog sticks to control all the action instead of having uh, like a button masher. So all these moves I'm doing right now, my hands are on both analog sticks for the PlayStation 2. Uh, the moves are logical, so like upswings are, you know, motions of the analog stick that correspond to what I think that the character should be doing. In addition, uh, another concept Genki has is the idea of chi. Uh, it's kind of like spiritual energy. This is the kind of gameplay mechanic that we use to get across the idea of the, uh, of the uh, superpowers that the characters have. So using chi, I'm able to jump high. I'm able to soar onto the rooftops. Uh, I can perform uh, superhuman moves, basically, when I'm using this kind of spiritual energy. This portion right now is the brawl portion. So Jen has just stolen the sword, and she must now flee the palace guards and defeat them, you know, to kind of uh, make her escape. Along the way, she'll encounter Shu, which is the Michelle Yeoh character. It's kind of like a major character that's a, an antagonist for you right now, so then you will have to escape from her, at which point she'll corner you in a palace and force a duel. Let's see if I can get some of the special moves off. There we go. You can see a lot of the kind of uh, unique moves that they have. The game is pretty early right now. We're shooting for, uh, you know, quarter four of this year, and there's still a lot to be done. You'll be able to play each of the three major characters, uh, Michelle Yeoh, and Chao Yun-Fat, and Zhang Zi. Uh, each of them will have all of their elements from the movie itself and be a self-contained story. So as you're playing them, you'll play all of, say, Chao Yun-Fat's parts back-to-back, uh, -back, and then he'll have kind of a complete story.
this hole, bend to the right. talking about
味方でどこまで行けると思うさあなダメだったら別の方法を考えるさねえリコは別の世界に行ったら何するの<笑>これはゲームだ結果を気にせずぶち当たりゲームの結果がどうなると気にすることはない落ち着いてセバスチャンこの人たちは違うみたいねフランダそうだねでもなんか変だよあははは
my name is VJ Laxman. I'm Vice President of Universal Studios, running the Tolkien franchise. And I'm joined with Tom Recruta from Surreal Software as an engineer on the project. And we're showing you guys uh, Tolkien, Fellowship of the Rings, on the PlayStation 2. Surreal Software did uh, Draken 2, highly acclaimed PlayStation 2 title. And there are preferred developers now working on the Tolkien Fellowship of the Rings PS2 project. You see an Aragorn here. He's our fighting guy. He can both use sword and bow. In this build, it's just on the sword. Good fighting elements, very, very visceral combat. One of the things that we wanted to do is make sure... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks like it hurt. We want to make sure that uh, the players who play this game are playing the most authentic version of Tolkien they can. And the way we're doing that is we have the literary rights to the books. And those literary rights allow us a lot, a great amount of depth to the play. And that depth has let us come in and play, make a game for, for the player that <laughs> it's hard. That, uh, that lets them literally explore the world um, in a way that you just can't do in a scene-to-scene -scene kind of game. Uh, we can go and explore all the lands of Middle-earth as we play through the Fellowship. Um, we can play one of three different characters, Aragorn, who's a fighter and a bowman, Gandalf, who has magical weapons, magical spells, and Frodo, who has stealth. And we really thought that triple gameplay really rounds out the universe. It makes people feel like they're really part of it. And it makes you master three very different skills when it comes to winning in the game. Um, our biggest, uh, you know, I guess, uh, claim to fame here and thing we're really excited about is that we are absolutely staying true to the Tolkien works. We work hand in hand with Tolkien Enterprises to make sure that everything we do is within the spirit of what Tolkien intended. That includes having hobbits, making sure that they're integral to the whole game, making sure that they are the reason why you are on this quest because they were the pivotal point for the game in the movie. So um, it's very important for us to maintain that kind of consistency. Our fan base, we hope what they expect to see this game is they have the game that they see is most truest to them reading what they read in the books. You know, they're playing that version. So uh, we're excited. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, E3 has been a great show for us. Dave Enriquez from Boston, Massachusetts, and I uh, play guitar for Digital New Age. 
What's up? I'm Jerry from Digital New Age. We both grew up playing in hardcore bands. Um, going to the clubs at night, listening to trance, and one day we sat down and figured out, we decided to put both of our favorite musics together. We actually used to play in a couple different bands, and you know, more on the heavier side of things, and uh, bands kind of broke up. We ended up playing together, and you know, both like trance, both like hard music, so you know, here we are mixing it up. It's kind of new age music, obviously. You know, it's been done a few times before, but not on the scale we're doing it. The name actually spawned from the music. The music came first, and then, you know, like a typical band, we sat down and tried to figure out what to call it. And digital new age came out of the music. We both grew up playing games, listening to games, and really haven't heard anything we liked on games as far as music. So it kind of, the industry's open uh, as far as needing it. Um, it just kind of goes hand in hand with trance and to be able to throw the hardcore in at the same time is really cool. You know, we have a, you know, a lot of music and uh, you know, some of it I think is going to fit well with you know, video games. So we're hoping to kind of, you know, we're here at E3, hoping to kind of land some, uh, some tracks and some video games. There's every kind of distributor here in the world, so this is the place to be for that, definitely. Record labels suck, so we started our own. Alchemedia spot from dealing with record labels that don't want to hear what you have to say, just want to take your demo and throw it in a room with a thousand other demos and it never get heard. We decided to start our own, fell into some funding. Boom. Uh, the, the CD is probably, uh, I'd say, you know, more than halfway done. And um, you know, in the middle of writing right now. It's kind of a long process, but you know, let's just want to take our time with it and you know, make the music sound the best we can.